Alright everyone, how are you guys doing? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And today we are here with a Vedion guide. So Vedion is one of the main, or three main wilderness bosses. Vedion's probably the hardest to kill. Well, maybe not the hardest to kill, but he has the most HP out of all of them. Probably takes the longest and debatably one of the hardest lures for all of the wilderness bosses. So, with that in mind, there has to be a reason that it is still, you know, viable. Um, and that is Ring of the Gods. Currently, Ring of the Gods is around probably 15 to 16 mil. The price could be dropping due to a Ring of Suffering update. Nonetheless, it is still a highly coveted item. And with it being 10 mil more than the next best ring from a Wilderness boss, the Tyrannical Ring being 5 mil, it's definitely a good reason to come here. Nonetheless, I'm going to kind of plug these other guides real quick. So as you can see here, I have a Venonatus guide and a Callisto guide. In my experience, and I've only done, you know, like 10, <laughs> I would say 10 Vedion kills. Vedion definitely seems to be the hardest to lure, most frustrating. Um, definitely tons of clans, you can't teleport right away. But, I mean, for Ring of the Gods is probably the main reason you'd come here. If you're looking for probably the best money, I'd say Venonat is probably the best money. And Venonat and Callisto both have easier lures to do. So... In my opinion, that's why I would choose one of those two. So you guys can click the screen right now if you want to go to either of those. But if you have uh, interest in killing Vedion, either for the ring, probably, or the pet. The pet is amazing. That little Vedion Jr. looks badass. Then uh, just continue with the guy. So first, we're going to start with the gear. As you can see on screen, you this is kind of giving you an idea as far as what you want to use. I am a pretty decently progressed account, and this is what I'm able to do. However, there are improvements that can be made. So if you look at my gear... Pretty much we have a Netsonaut helm. You can replace that with a Dwarven helm if you have the Grim Tales quest done. However, I do not. The Dwarven helm gives you a little bit of crush bonus, which is helpful. A Salve Amulet E as my necklace slot. However, you can get a or Salve Amulet. You can get a Salve Amulet E if you do the Tarn's Diary or mini quest thing. I have not had that done. Nonetheless, you pretty much need that because it gives you a plus 15 or plus 20 um, boost as far as killing undead creatures. I don't know why mine said 16, but uh, nonetheless. Then you're going to want monk robes just for the prayer bonus. Then you're going to want probably rune gloves. Um, combat bracelet works fine too. Then you can bring dragon boots or rune boots depending on how much you want to. You don't really even risk that considering you keep them, so I'd recommend dragon. Um, then I have a ring of the, or a dueling ring just to teleport to clan wars after trips to reheal my HP and get my prayer back up. Then if you guys look at the weapon, personally I use an Abyssal Bludgeon because I can afford it. Basically you want some sort of crush weapon, so if you can't afford a Bludgeon, Hosta would be your second best option. Then God Swords, then Darok Axe or Varox Flail. If you guys look at the inventory, you're pretty much going to want to just bring a Super Set, minus the defense because you'll be praying of course. Three Prayer Pods, a Stamina Potion just to make it easier if you want to walk, feel free. Um, games Necklace and a Glory, a Glory to teleport away from PKers, game, Games Necklace to get to Corporal Beast Lair, which is where I am recording right now. Other than that, you're going to want to bring pretty decent food, I recommend Sharks, but you can bring Monkfish if you want. So now that you've reached the Corporal Beast Lair, you're going to want to pretty much just run out of the cave, as I will do here in a second. <laughs> Sorry, I'm recording this afterwards. Anyways, from there you're going to want to run north. You'll end up being at around level 32 wilderness whenever you get there, so that'll kind of give you a base idea as to when you have reached the area. You'll just run through some skeletons, a little tree area, hop and find your own world, obviously, don't mess with anyone else. Then you're just going to want to throw melee protect on, because that's really the only thing he's going to hit you with. Just avoid all of the lightning splashes. And then basically you run over to this cave. This is the easiest safe spot and the only one I will talk about in this video as because it is the easiest so once you're standing on the left like the left square as you can see right now the left square of the cave that's where you're going to want to start then you take off your run and you start walking south as soon as he attacks you the first time as soon as he throws out an attack on your screen you start walking south now you'll walk until you see these tan squares walk about two steps north of where you'll see the rocks south of you as you can see the rocks right there on the bottom part of the screen two steps north Basically, the reason that this lure is really annoying is because it's very RNG dependent. So as you can see right here, you're going to end up walking on the left-hand side of him. If you walk under him, but on the left-hand side, that gives you a better chance of having him move to the right. However, sometimes that isn't the case. As you can see, this was a fail, and typically I just end up logging out or going to a different world. This is one wherever he was one square to the left of where I actually wanted him. However, you can work him back into the spot. So basically, 
if you are in line with the line that you were supposed to be at initially and you walk under him and he goes one square to the right, he's already in the trap. You'll get a hang of when you have him on that line. As you can see here, I ended up getting him. That's kind of helpful. So once you get to half health on either of his phases, he does have two phases, you will have to kill these greater skeleton hellhounds. Two of them will spawn. You have to play protect melee because they just they hit too much. So you're going to have to kill those both times. If you don't kill them, you will not hit anything at all. So that's about it. You pretty much just want to do that. And as long as you kind of understand the safe spotting guide, you should be good to go. So here's the loot I got and got some cannonballs, however, nonetheless. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, feel free to leave a like or subscribe. Um, if you guys have any ways of me improving future guides or anything you guys want to see in the future, feel free to leave that in a comment down below. And nonetheless, hope you guys have a wonderful day and peace.